Today we've got your full in-depth review of the Sigma 105 f2.8 macro art series lens. Now this is going to be for Sony full frame mirrorless cameras, but it may be also available for other camera mounts as well. Now this is a macro lens primarily, but you can also get away with using it for things like portraits and just general photography and video as well. It is an autofocus lens with no image stabilization. And here are some basic specs on this lens to get you going guys. If you haven't seen one of my videos, my name is Stefan Malik. I do a lot of photography and filmmaking news reviews and tutorials. So if you do enjoy this type of content and you like this video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and join the community. So who would I recommend this lens to? Well, definitely somebody that is loving macro or wants to get into it more. You can absolutely produce professional results, but this is going to be a great starter lens for somebody getting into macro just because simply of its ease of use. So as usual, we're gonna dive in and look at everything that's important to do with this lens, starting with the build and features. In terms of build and features, this is a Sigma Art Series lens, so it does have a good construction as well as some great features. It measures 7 and 5 8 inches long with the lens head installed and only 5 and 5 16 without. It does have a little bit of weight to it at about 1.5 pounds and does feel like a great solid construction. In terms of buttons and switches, it's got an automatic manual focus switch, a focus hold button, a focus limiting switch, and a click button, as well as a little lock switch to help control your aperture ring and dial it in just the way you like it using hard stops or a nice smooth motion. Of course, you can throw it into auto and let the camera do the work, or if you're shooting in manual or aperture priority, control it directly from your camera. The large oversized and grippy focus ring is a nice experience, making it helpful and easy to nail focus using manual. On the front, you'll find 62 mm filter threads, as well as Sigma's patented coatings to help with ghosting and flare. And on the back, you'll find a rugged metal mount with a rubber gasket to help with weather sealing protection and confidence. Overall, it's a well put together lens with good build quality and some great features you're looking for. It does lack image stabilization, but is a step above its 70 mm contemporary cousin. And for build and features, I give this lens a solid four stars. Next, we'll jump into performance to see how this lens does, and we'll start with the autofocus. Now, being a macro lens, it's not surprising that this isn't the fastest autofocusing lens, and although autofocus is really nice to have, most of your macro work will probably be spent in manual focus. The autofocus does produce a little bit of noise, some audible ticks and clicks, and expect some hunting from time to time. Again, nothing too bad, but you can improve this lens's performance by using the focus limiting switch. Here's a low light stress test and no doubt a darker environment than you'll be shooting in, but I was surprised that the accuracy remained consistent. A little bit more hunting, but this lens did perform well under low light conditions. Here on my Sony a7 IV, what it lacks in speed, it makes up for in accuracy. Excuse the camera shake here in our manual focus test. It is accurate and does perform well, but does obviously suffer from some focus breathing. So do keep that in mind. And here's a few of my favorite test shots for you. This is a versatile lens in that you can use it for everyday stuff like portraits, but also get in and shoot macro when needed. And that's really gonna be where it shines primarily. As you saw, it's not the quietest or the fastest focusing autofocus, but it will get the job done. Now in terms of image quality, as you'll see in a few minutes, this thing is razor sharp. And with nine aperture blades, the bokeh and transitions of this lens are just beautiful. And here's a few more shots edited with my new one click preset master pack. So if you are into presets, make sure you check out the link in the description for a special offer. Next, we'll jump in and have a more detailed look at the sharpness and optics, but here's a real world example of the quality you can get. This is a focus stacked image with five or six images to show you the incredible detail available with this lens. And let's do some pixel peeping here to see the sharpness of this lens. Wide open at f2.8, of course the center of the image is razor sharp, and it's a very, very good performance even into the corners. Very, very impressive, very sharp lens. Stopping down to f4, you see an improvement, just almost flawless from 5.6 here down to f8, and we're not gonna see any degradation until about f16. And even at about f22, it's still a very, very good, very usable image with just a little bit of diffraction kicking in, causing a bit of softness, but overall a very impressive performance here optically. 
And here's a look at our macro side of things at one to one magnification, very close up, as you can see in the center at f2.8, still very, very sharp. The corners are a tiny bit soft, but that's really not what we're concerned about here at f2.8 at one to one magnification. However, if you do stop down, you can see a definite improvement and razor sharp image across the board here at f4. And it's just gonna get a little bit better here at f5.6 and F8 just looking absolutely amazing. Down to F11 and once again, after about F16, you're gonna start to see just a, a little bit of softness start to come back into the images, but completely usable. All the way down to F22 here, you see a little bit of softness here, but definitely nothing too bad at all. Overall, optically, this lens is phenomenal. So in terms of performance as a whole, this lens is a great package. I'm gonna rate it as a macro lens, which obviously it should be primarily, and in the right hands, an absolutely professional caliber lens. For performance, I give it four and a half stars. Last but not least, we'll touch on the value of this lens. I think every photographer should have a macro lens, and you never know when you're gonna to need to get up close and personal with a subject. At around 650 US dollars, this lens has a ton of value and an awesome long warranty to boot. It's a definite step above its 70 millimeter cousin, but there's also the native 90 millimeter macro that's image stabilized, but only comes with a one year warranty. If you are on the fence between one of these three, make sure you check out my comparison videos to help out with that. There's also quite a few manual macro lenses on the market, but if you're a beginner, I'd recommend sticking to an autofocus lens, and that's what we're checking out here today. In terms of value, I think this lens is a winner, and I give it four and a half stars. So wrapping up my friends, this is definitely a lens that you should have on a short list. And as always, here's my personal pros and cons for this lens. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you are a subscriber, you also know that I like to rate things on a scale from never think about again to consider to definitely buy. And if you've got a decent budget looking for an autofocus macro lens, well then I'd strongly consider this one. So there you have it guys. There's my thoughts on the awesome Sigma 105 F 2.8 macro art lens. Obviously a pretty darn and solid lens and definitely a contender if you're thinking about going against the Sony 90 millimeter macro, which I do have a full in-depth comparison. I'll link that video for you to check out if you're on the fence. Guys, if you did wanna pick this lens up, I'll drop affiliate links down below. Thanks so much for watching and like always make mistakes, be yourself and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.